Uh, the agenda this evening, we've got um, declarations of interest and minutes. Uh, Dawn will then introduce um, the uh, constituency manager's report. Uh, uh, David Davis will give us the report back that you asked for for the electoral um, register. And then David Armstrong will talk about, within the framework of the, new, of the future council, some of the key budget options. And then I'm anxious to save as much time for questions as possible. This time round, trying to learn from our previous experiences, all the questions that have, have been submitted have got detailed written answers for. I think we may select some of them, um, various um, members of the council, but actually speak to the answers that they have actually prepared. We get a debate going on there and that's then help them the business about future meetings. So, can I ask um, on item one, are there any declarations of interest that the members wish to declare? Could you possibly speak into the, the mic? You know, all, 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 the, all the George needs to declare oh, on the item of uh, magenta. magenta. <coughs> but that's right. Don't let's get worried about that. Sure. Yeah. I also have an interest in that. Anyone on with no, magenta no, interest? No, no, no. Uh, Chris, have you got an interest? No, no. no all right, very good. Can we go on to the minutes? Are the minutes accepted as. Very good. Right. Uh, the minutes. Other minutes? Accepted as a true record? Can I, may I sign them? Yes. Thank you very much. Um, are there matters arising from the minutes that people want to raise which are not covered by the agenda papers themselves? Then we should move on. Dawn, would you like to introduce your report? Please. Thank you. This update report talks through the actions <coughs> agreed in the previous meeting in terms of the budget that's been allocated to the committee to date, and it's also got some proposals in, in terms of the remaining budget and, and discussions within the committee of how that can be spent. So we just worked through the report, starting at item 2.1. It was agreed that a priority for this constituency committee was to improve communication with, with residents and the community in general, and one of the ideas around that was the development of a community Pleased to say we've gone through the process. Um, we had a tender process which received four tenders in. I can't say today because they've not been informed. I can't say at present who has been appointed, but they will be written to um, tomorrow and the contract start date will slip back a week till the 8th of November. So, what was really positive that came through the tenders and, and the aim behind the publication was how they're going to go and work with the community to make sure that the information is what people want to read and informing people uh, of relevant things and things of interest. So we'll probably be in touch with a lot of people post this. Andy Brannan as the engagement officer will be a link between the committee and the, the contract that's been awarded um, to follow that through. Second update um, in terms of budget was an allocation improving the environment and what the committee wants to look at doing is particularly addressing areas of unmanaged land that look unsightly, untidy um, and don't help with how they Birkenhead, the appearance of Birkenhead as a whole. Uh, tender has been drafted for that which is looking to appoint a contractor to work on approximately 12 to 15 sites. It's only in a, um, an allocation of £20,000 but what's really interesting about it is looking at a piece, an area that is, is unsightly, who, how it's managed now and how that can be improved going forward. Really interesting, we've had a lot of community groups in touch around this saying we'd really like to kind of adopt a piece of area, we'd like to get involved in, in keeping the area tidy. So the job of whoever contracted to this will be to look at each, each plot, look at the initial improvement of it, but long term what could be a maintenance strategy to keep that, that looking better than it is and putting pressure with private owners, private landlords and, and how how they can be worked with to, to make sure they, they don't look unsightly going forward. That's in process at the moment with an anticipated start date of the 1st of December. The 
The second aim under this pot of money was related to, to the data exercise and as details in the minutes, there's been a pre-meeting to this meeting with the future council team, which the chair attended um, to explore options around how that exercise that's been carried out could support this committee in the task they set out to achieve of what's being spent in Birkenhead, how it's being spent and what outcomes are being achieved for that. Frank, do you want to update anything on that meeting in terms of going forward? Not particularly, um, other than that, that, you, that our, at our very first meeting, we made a decision um, to try and look at budgets and to dis determine of the total budget, the 16 national budgets um, and the local authority budget, how much was actually that being spent in Birkenhead. Uh, to break that down, to the main headings of expenditure, for example, uh, the under fives, and then try and relate those budgets to what the council has said as a, what, a, what are the outcomes we're seeking with the expenditure of those funds. Um, and I, later on, you'll have um, probably three detailed presentations of areas where the council has started these activities and tried to dig down and there will be therefore a progress report on those. But it's good for you because I think so far, given that no authority anywhere else in the country has actually tried this approach in understanding how your money is actually spent and linking the expenditure of your money to agreed outcomes which the people of Birkenhead think are desirable. The next Item under 2.2 refers to funding that was awarded to the committee under the Public Health Outcome Fund. It was decided with this money to develop a community hub at a local primary school. It was an initiative that had been developed through Wirral and uh, through the Child Poverty Working Group and there was two pilots being carried out in other areas and nine of them were in Birkenhead and based on the is we've got, the committee thought it was important that we do get one developed in Birkenhead and um, actually looking to develop two. We sent out um, an invitation letter to all the schools with certain levels of high income deprivation and received one, one interest at which an interview took place on the 21st of October. Um, I think Councillor Alma Blackburn is just going to give an update on that. Also benefit 
benefited from the further £25,000 which uh, public health have allocated. So to that end, we have a meeting planned now for the end of November at Rock Ferry Primary School uh, to look at uh, a potential proposal from them as well. So uh, I think that's all I want to say, unless you want to add anything or uh, but we will bring you further updates and reports back to committee as the uh, as the project goes forward. Okay, thanks very much. Can I ask the committee for approval that we continue with that development? Thank you very much. Okay, so moving on to item 2.3, this was related to voluntary sector support fund again awarded through public health to this committee. £15,000 was allocated to develop a service to increase breastfeed and initiation rates in Birkenhead. It's one of those services that the committee is talking about looking at spending outcomes, a lot of money spent, and we still have the lowest initiation rates. So this was a really creative service to say how can we, we increase that, and one of the ideas was to work with mums earlier on. So this, this, the attached to the report is the second quarter monitoring for the service. And it's 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 working well. We've got significant breakthrough as we've all all can talk through how we can work together better. Yeah. How we can work together better. And what Home Star as the provider of this service have managed to do is work with health visitors and other professionals to set up an information sharing protocol. So where where someone is is in pregnancy term is how they can get the information and work with these families as early as possible, which is really good breakthrough and it'll be really interesting to see the next quarter's report and, and the impact that has. Item two on this was about the promotion of our website, which is detailed there and what's been bought and an engagement plan is written to implement this. And then move on.
many out of that, we've got a lot of money. I'm trying to get it to a combined budget much more effectively spent. Um, what's the budget for those four organisations? Uh, we didn't know to be second hand how we actually find out about that. We'd be then having another meeting. Um, again, we try and get people to move to the next stage of that. Is, can you surrender some of your sovereignty over your budget? If you think you could collectively spend what will be a considerable sum of money much more effectively by agreeing a program um, for those four budgets, uh, we'll, have, we'll have more to report back on that. In the meantime, the proposal here is we should allocate £35,000 and that we should actually see whether there are other organisations that have different ideas of, of trying to counter this scourge. Um, and if so, that we would back them. And that's the proposal that we are for tonight. So if you want to come in and maybe other councillors. Yeah, I, I, I just want to make, um, make add two, two points to that. I think the, the, other, um, uh, the other dimension of the, the, uh, the meeting we have is um, there's clearly a lot of activity going on around this, but it's not entirely clear what the outcomes are in terms of, you know, the number of prosecutions, the number of social behaviour orders. You know, I think residents want assurance that the, the, the money that's being spent is actually having an impact. So I think we ask for more information about what is actually being achieved for the money that's going in. And I think um, the, the other the other element to say that this is this is it's it's a stick and carrot, isn't it? So yes, we need to there needs to be a zero tolerance now. So okay, we need to clamp down. But um, one of the organisations that we've talked to in the past, um, uh, I'll mention them because they did really work with the YMCA in, in, in West End Lane, do fantastic work with young people in, in actually preventing them getting in, involved in any such behaviour in, in the first place. So I think that, that was the kind of organisation, I'm not saying it's the only organisation, that was the kind of organisation who wanted to see, um, you know, help to, to develop that work. So as well as, as the enforcement side, we've also got the prevention side um, as well. Sorry, no, George and then Denise. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, get into that before my uh, being the council member for community safety, one of the things that I've actually thought about long and hard for some 10 years is the fact that why do we have uh, each one of our RSLs registered social landlords who have their own teams in terms of community safety, but the council also has a team. So where Frank quite rightly points out about wanting to know where all business and where it goes, I'd like to know is what the benefits are by each one of those 13 registered social landlords having people working on their own properties. So I'll take you for example an area which I look after, which is not so loose, I'm not saying that that much. But not so on the state is Magenta. Magenta housing uh, are the main people who are on the state. They only now own, and it's the same everywhere you go. They only now own 50% in that much of the estate. So therefore, the private rented sector, or, or the ownership, private ownership, on that estate is a little bar. So how can you then say that they can operate and look after the people on the agenda as against the people in the private sector? Or who do the people in the private sector go to if there is anti-social behavior taking place? So I think the whole thing that needs to be together. And one of the ways we can do that is bring it right at the strategic housing group. Now, it won't, it'll be difficult for people to surrender different things, but I just think that the partnership work, we can get out of that and the benefits of the people who will, and in particular, if they're in there, it be immense. So what do you want to bring Janine? Um, just going on, just saying, I talked about
but not only locating to the geography of where the problems are, but also the people with their budgets, how they spend their, how their staff budget and the contracts for hours work map when you as constituents need those staff to be around. So there's no point if most of these, let's say, most it doesn't, but most of the antisocial behaviour happens between seven and ten in the evening. There are almost no staff um, on, on duty between uh, seven and ten, but are between say between nine and five. It's getting it's getting a huge amount of flexibility added into um, a, a new meaning of public service.